Welcome to CWS Christian Writing and Speaking, an Elevated Missions Prep Incorporated company. I'm your host, Jackie Wilson. And today's guest is the author of the upcoming book, Unseen People, Sharing Light and Life with Your Neighbors and the Nations. She inspires mission-driven Christ followers to sharpen their focus on undervalued unseen people locally and globally so she can lead them to meet those people at their point of need and offer them a hope-filled future. Further, she provides communication pieces for nonprofits through her business, DLS Communicator for Global Good, LLC. Let's welcome to the CWS stage, Ms. Deanna Sanders. Welcome, Thank Deanna. Thank you. Thank you. So happy to be here. Thanks for that grand introduction. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to hear your story about okay. why are you really focusing on helping leaders see the unseen people? Of course, we know that it was what Christ was about, but you've noticed that there is a particular need. So why this? Well, because I think to be the kind of leaders that, that God has intended us to be um, as followers of him, to be like him, as you just said, and to uh, to dig deep into the lives of others and see them um, not just as a project to be fixed, but a person to know and to love and to lead to Christ. And sometimes I think we we leave out that piece. We, we're so busy doing that we forget about being in relationship with people. And that starts with seeing people all around us. Um, and we like, you know, we are busy people and we get in our cars and, our, and go or we are on meetings or, and that's all good stuff. And God has called us to do that. But in the process, we don't want to lose focus on the people he puts in our path. And I, I think that this had spoke to me personally uh, because I was I was that person. So I love to do mission. I love to go out and, and meet needs. But sometimes I was overlooking the people and just trying to to get the job done. So I don't want that to be uh, the focus of others that I could help at this point in time to slow down and see the people that God's put in our path. Yeah. Can you talk about some of the effects of not seeing the people mm. when you're doing the mission work? Mm, that's a good question. I think that, that um, we, well, part of it is we lose the joy of it. <laughs> we lose getting to know people. We lose uh, the opportunity to make a deeper connection. Uh, we lose um, uh the, the big part of why God calls called us to do what we do. And um, it, it doesn't mean that God can't accomplish good work, even if we're not uh, focused, but so much more, so much more can happen um, as we meet and as we work with other Christian leaders together on mission and to cultivate the soil of, of a relationship with people. I think I keep coming back to that word is, is relationship and you can't have relationship until you stop and slow down and see the people in your path. So, and we don't want to miss that. Um, there's, there's people that are just fascinating that we would see on a daily basis, but until we put the brakes on and look, we're missing out on that, those, those people and their stories and their life just as significant as my life. So, you know, they everyone's important and has a story that we need to hear. I love that. You talk about their lives are just as significant as our lives, even yes. though they're the ones in need at the time. Yes. Yes. God, Jesus died for them as much as he did for us, you know, and, and people that we don't even see on the other side of the world, as well as people that we do see in our path, they're all equally valuable to their maker who made us all in his image and loves us all. And all of us have that value. Um, that sometimes we forget to see. Um, if we struggle with seeing value in our own selves, we may struggle with seeing it in others. Um, so I think that point in the morning time or whenever it is that you have your your time with God is show me show me the people in my path today, God, the people of value that you have made. Because sometimes it's not that God doesn't give us opportunities. I think it's sometimes we just don't see it. We want uh, to open up our lives to be those people that God can use um, on a regular basis. And sometimes that doesn't mean that it's you have to, you know, really be involved in the nitty gritty of somebody's life. Sometimes it's just a touch point. Sometimes it's just enough uh, to see somebody and, and to know that they exist that 
brightens their day. And uh, and that God can use that, you know, whether it if you do it in the intention of honoring him, he can use that. And uh, we, we want to be those people. This this dark world needs a, a lot of light. That's part of the subtitle, sharing light. He is the light and we want him to shine through us. So asking us to him to fill us every day with that light so we can share it with others on the way. Yeah, I love it. So you mentioned your book. Let's mm -hmm. mention the title again. Okay. It is Unseen People Sharing Light and Life with Your Neighbors and the Nations. So I, I've always I've always kind of had a calling to the other side of the world. <laughs> and I've done that in a lot of capacities through my life. Um, but at one point it's like, okay, I've got neighbors right next door that need to be seen and heard as well. So I started writing stories and when I started writing these stories, those kept coming up. It's like those neighbors are just as important as the ones in the nations that need to hear. Uh, so it's a both and it's not an either or. And that's what this book is about, a collection of those stories that I've gathered through the years. Tell us one of the most powerful stories that's within the book. I think probably one of the, one of the ones is that one next door story. Um, there was a, a man who lived there for a while who was divorced and um, we only kind of got to know each other just going out on, the, you know, taking our garbage things out, bins out to the road or whatever, or in the driveways, just, you know, seeing each other like that, like neighbors do. And um, I got to know him one time. He held his little puppy up over the fence and the puppy was just yapping at my dogs. And we got to know each other because of our dogs. But I never got to really know him very deeply. And one day he came out and he had a big patch over his eye. He said he'd been sick. And um it had cancer and he's going up about to go back to the hospital and have uh, the other eye operated. I had no idea he was going through stuff like that. Uh, and then it was just a week later, I saw his obituary in the newspaper wow. and it's like, Oh my goodness, I had no idea. And I missed the opportunity to get to know Mike a little deeper because of uh, just, you know, just taking him for granted because he was always there. But you know what? People aren't always there. And uh, there might have been more opportunity for my husband and I to grow a deeper connection with our next door neighbor. And that, that's always bothered me ever since. It's like I didn't know him, but not to the point of maybe impacting his life for Christ like I could. So that's yeah. my challenge to other people as they're reading this is uh, don't take those people for granted. They're not maybe always going to be there. But, there, you know, there's always there's other stories as well. Um from the other side of the world. I worked for a, a nonprofit called She is Safe for a while, and I was uh, working in and out of Indonesia for quite a bit. So I quite, I saw a lot of people that on little islands off of Indonesia that people would never even know exist, you know? And there's, I was sitting on the porch one time with holding one of the ladies' babies. This was an anti-trafficking organization. And I was holding one of those little babies and I thought people never know she is there, uh, but God does. And thankfully, I got to intersect with her life. And God can use that in however he will to know that a lady from the other side of the world cared enough to come to see her. So the stories like that, they're both local and global. I just want people to be aware there's a world of people who need to be seen. That's the message of the book. Yeah. And obviously, the story with Mike deeply mm -hmm. impacted your life. How else has your experiences impacted you? Um, I think I wanted, I have become more of a person who, person who sees people individually and sees people like just for example, I have a discipleship group of young women I meet with in a local restaurant and breakfast place. And um, we've come there for almost three years now, just, just meeting and every few weeks. And so we've gotten to know some of the servers there. So it, it, I kind of realized they're not just there to serve me. You know, there are people who need to know who Jesus is as well. And needs to see it through our lives, not just studying our Bibles, but living the word. And so if they don't have a name tag on, then I ask for their name, at least their first name. And I, and I write it down really quickly because I forget really quickly. Um, and so I try to use it, their name before. And when you say their name, it just lights up their face. And people like to be seen. Your name is who you are. I and mean, it, it describes who you are. And it, people want to hear it. So um, I try to do that. And so that is what has changed me through the years is to not just see a, a group of people or not just see a person who's there to help me, but to reverse that. How can I help them? Um, and it takes effort. That, that's a discipline to do. 
uh, doesn't come easy and I don't always get it right. Never, you know, but I'm working on it. So I think that's been the challenge to myself as well. Yeah, that story, your daily experiences with mm-hmm. service, it reminds me of the song, You Know My Name. And mm-hmm. it really says you matter. And yep. we recognize absolutely. that you are here for a reason in this world. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Uh, just yesterday, I went back to the same restaurant. And I had written her name down in my journal and I used it. And uh, it's it's amazing how that connection, it just starts with that. And it can grow to something more as, as God opens those doors. But just being aware of it, I think, is the starting point. Yeah, I love it. What's next for you, Deanna? I write every week a, a newsletter on a Substack, and uh, I have that listed on my website. I'll tell you about it in a minute. But so I, I do that every every week. It's called a Good Word Wednesday, so it comes out on Wednesday mornings, and it keeps me in the discipline of of writing, keeping my writing sharp. Uh, but also, I be, can keep telling the stories that God put the people he puts in my path and lessons he's teaching me and it connects with people just on a human Christian level. Um, so I do that. Uh, I don't see that ending <laughs> anytime soon, but, uh, my book is in process. It's not published yet. So we're still in the editing phase. So that's where I'm at right now is I continue to write, but I'm, I'm, I'm in the nitty gritty of getting the, the words right. So that will, uh, resonate with people when they read it. I love it. And you mentioned your website. So let's tell people how to connect with you. The the best thing, though, probably the only one I'm going to mention is DeannaLynnSanders.com. It's D-E-A-N-N-A-L-Y-N-N-S-A-N-D-E-R-S.com. And it's got all my other social sites and all that. And as well as my, if people can subscribe to my newsletter, I would love it if they would do that. We can get to know each other that way. But all that information is on the website. Just got to click on that. And there you go. And I keep updates about my book there as well, about uh, the process of it. And hopefully I can uh, have a date soon about when it will be released. That will be wonderful. As we wrap up your interview, Deanna, I want you to leave a final word with the audience. What is one thing that they can do today to impact someone's life? I want them to see somebody that they may not have seen before. And you start with God, show me who that is. Uh, and it could be at the restaurant you go to. It could be in uh, the, the a parent of a kid at your school. It could be uh, somebody at church you just see, but you never have gotten to know. But get to know them. Ask them their name. Just start with a name. I've got a story in the book about that. Just start with a name. God knows your name. He's written you in the palm of his hand. So it's significant enough to get to know somebody else's name. And if you're like me and you can't remember, write it down, put it in your phone notes, something. So you can remember that person when they come up again, you can, uh, it's the beginning of a relationship. So do that. Just one simple thing. Yeah. I love um, what Deanna is doing. I just think about the people that we pass by on the street every day. Do we know them? Do we know their name? Do we know what they're going through? Do we know whether or not we can actually assist them as they go through whatever they are going through? It's time to get to know people's names. And I challenge you to do that today. Take that extra step. You are a follower of Christ. And just as Jesus died for you, he died for them too. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. And until next time, beautiful people. God bless.